Republican rival Senator Ted Cruz. So how is he feeling this morning? Ted Cruz joins us now from the Capitol. Senator, good morning to you. Good morning. Good to be with you. Good to have you here. Uh, you were in this race for a very long time. You wanted the nomination. You wanted to be the guy taking the oath of office today. So let me start with your emotions. What are you feeling? Well, to be honest, the biggest thing I'm feeling is excitement for what's coming next. Uh, this election in November uh, what, what was a mandate for change. Uh, it was the American people saying overwhelmingly that we want to change the path we're on. And, and I think we have the opportunity right now to do an extraordinary amount of good. And, and I am excited to roll up my sleeves and get to work actually delivering on the promises we made, bringing back jobs, helping raise wages, protecting people's freedom, and keeping this country safe. Let me stay on the personal side for a moment, Senator, if you don't mind. I did mention that you clashed uh, often with Donald Trump during the campaign. How would you describe your personal relationship now? Oh, it was, it was a vigorous campaign. He, he campaigned hard, I campaigned hard, and, and he won. The democratic process worked. He prevailed in the primary, he prevailed in the general. And, and at this point, I would say we have a very good relationship. You know, right after the election was over in November, I traveled to New York, went to Trump Tower, sat down with the president-elect, and I, and I said, I want to help any way I can. I want to help lead the fight in the Senate to accomplish what we promised for the American people. The stakes are too high. And, and, and since that meeting, my office and his office, we, we have been talking every day, sometimes as frequently as every hour. And, and I am very, very encouraged. I think we are poised to have the most productive Congress in decades. Uh, I think we're going to start <laughs> off uh, confirming every one of President Trump's cabinet nominations. I think it's a fan, fantastic cabinet. And then we're going to turn to repealing Obamacare, and we're finally going to repeal that law that has hurt so many millions of Americans, that's taken away so much health care, right. that has driven up premiums and, and cost people jobs. And, and, and then I think we're going to be very productive early on, lifting the burdens on job producers, on small businesses, and creating an environment where there are more jobs and more opportunities. Senator, there. Uh there is still this Russia cloud that hangs over this election. It hangs over today. New York Times says uh, more news today. What is your level of concern uh, about what Russia has done? And how important do you think it is for there to be an investigation that gets to the final verdict bottom of what Russia did? You know, there's no doubt that, that Russia tried to undermine this election, and they've tried to undermine past elections. And, and, and unfortunately, cyber attacks and mischief by, by foreign countries is not new. We, we, we've been for eight years subject to cyber attacks from countries like China, country, countries like North Korea. And, and I'll tell you, one of the reasons for that is after eight years of the Obama foreign policy, the foreign policy of this country has been to show weakness in the face of aggression. But wait a minute, wait, this is a different is senator. Senator, this was a di you're, you're, you're sort of conflating it with other cyber attack. It was more than no. just cyber. What Russia is doing <laughs> is trying to undermine a lot of Western democracies. What is your level of concern on Russia in particular? I, uh, listen, my level of concern with the enemies across the globe is significant. But I think there's also a reason why, why folks in the press like to focus on this media issue, why so many Democrats like to focus on, on Russia, because, because there's an effort to try to delegitimize the election. Russia did not decide this election. What decided this election is the American people rejected a failed economic agenda from the last eight years of, of President Obama. This election was decided by the working men and women of this country. It was decided by steel workers and truck drivers and plumbers and electricians and school teachers. Those are the people that have been hammered the last eight years. And, and so Senator I get that all of Hillary Clinton's defenders want to try to blame Russia rather than admitting it was the American people who said enough is enough. We want well, to let's return just say to the jobs and productivity and opportunity. The election is over, and I agree with you on that. Let's talk about what happens after the election. You have yeah. said we need to stand up to Vladimir Putin. Donald Trump Absolutely. has said we need a better relationship with Vladimir Putin. Do you worry that Donald Trump has a blind spot when it comes to Russia and Vladimir Putin? You know, I think Putin is an individual who respects strength. And, and one of the reasons that, that, that we have seen such an aggressive Russia the last eight years is I don't think 
Putin respects the current occupant of the Oval Office. I don't think he respects President Obama. I think he views him as weak and ineffective. I hope and believe that's going to change at noon today, that, that if you want to keep this country safe, I, you know, when I travel abroad, when I talk with, with, with foreign heads of state, with foreign ministers, with ambassadors, they, they say over and over again, our friends and allies tell me, we can't trust America. Your word isn't any good. You don't keep your word. You don't stand by your friends. And our enemies are not afraid of us. That needs to change. Our friends and allies need, need to be able to trust us. And our enemies should fear us. And, and I'll tell you, if you look at the national security team that, that, that President Trump has put together, if you look at General Mattis as Secretary of Defense, if, if you look at General Flynn as the national security advisor, if you look at Mike Pompeo at CIA, I'm very encouraged that we're going to see a return and, and, and that across the world, friends and enemies alike are going to say America is back. Senator Cruz, you talked about joining him in his fight. He fights for some things in some groups that you're not a fan of. He says said nice things about Planned Parenthood, thinks they do good things. He has a position on trade that's diametrically opposed to years of Republican orthodoxy. And he also has talked about doing deals with Senator Schumer on infrastructure. Are you going to fight for those things? I think the next few years, we're, we're, we're going to see what specific policy proposals emerge from the new administration they're bringing the well, team specifically together. would you fight to to reverse trade deals that you once thought were a good idea and good for the american uh, uh, economy well well i i've advocated quite vocally that we need to be more vigorous protecting american interest on trade i think the obama administration didn't look out for the american worker i vocally opposed TPP. And so I'm glad to see a president who's focused on American jobs. Now, I think we need to be opening up foreign markets at the same time. I think that's good. But but I'm encouraged. You know, I, I sat down with, with with our new commerce secretary. He's likely to be confirmed very soon. And, and his view, what he articulated for the president right. is very much in line with what I believe, which is we should open up foreign markets. But on deals that are good for America, we shouldn't just get taken advantage of by other countries. And on that note, Senator Cruz, I'm going to have to run to a break. I really appreciate you joining us this morning from the Rotunda. Thank you. Always good to be with you. It's going to be interesting to see the dynamic.